Hey guys, welcome back, it's Maverick here today with another episode of Isekai Make You Harem. So, last episode, we finally got to the sexy times that everybody was waiting for. Now, however, we're going back to the, uh, the Make You part of the, um, of the series name here, and that is going into the Labyrinth, of course, this time with Roxanne by Michio's side. And, uh, we're probably going to get into a lot of the mechanics in this episode, at least that should be the situation, if they don't, you know, rush things along and get to the next girl, otherwise I would expect for this particular episode to mostly be focused on dungeon diving and and explaining a little bit more about the skills doing some experiments etc etc maybe maybe some little more uh sexy times as well but uh in any case let's get into the episode and find out Alrighty, let's begin in three two one play By the way, some people were asking me last episode, like, uh, why I'm not watching the uncensored version. Like, again, uh, at least for for the channel here, I am not going to be watching the uncensored version since, as you guys can see down below, I am putting the subtitles in as well. So, second target decided. I don't think Letter is supposed to, like, <laughs> bounce around like that, but sure. I mean, Letter Armor should be, like, Hard Letter. Oh. Alright. So yeah, so so judging by the way things are going so far, I do expect them to take their time in this episode to go through like all of the various steps that they should go through. Um, so in the beginning, well, let's talk a little bit about the beginning here, right? Uh, since we already went through the process of like skill crystals, trying to add skills to empty slots, and and so on and so forth. So again, uh, I've been saying how this is a series that really draws onto its gamification background. Um, and, and so it's constantly being used as well, right? Like Michio, when he's buying some equipment, he's always checking to see if there's empty skill slots, empty slots within the equipment, where with these empty slots, you could slot skill, sk uh, they call it what, skill crystals in. Although, like, uh... No, not quite like some other uh, action, you know, some other games, MMORPGs or whatnot, where a lot of times they allow you, the character, to just add in the skills uh, if there is an open slot. So in this world, at least, uh, the the act of putting skill crystals into an empty slot requires the uh, the employment of a blacksmith. I'm not gonna spoil anything right now, but later on, you'll you guys will see like uh, why you know out of all of Michio's abilities, honestly, status like being able to check everything with his eyes is probably the most OP ability there is to him.
it's a cheat skill. <laughs> I think all of the special skills that Micho has are kind of like uh, cheat skills, which are outside the normal jurisdiction of this world. Just like what? <laughs> I mean, I'd definitely be pissed as well, right? All this time, there is this way of actually getting money beyond just getting drops. This type, you know, Roxanne's personality here also really shines through. <laughs> I kind of forgot. Actually, I kind of forgot uh, in in terms of the uh, in terms of the timeline whether or not Roxanne we are supposed to know about the battle prowess of Roxanne already. I don't quite remember this particular. Oh, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> now, Michio's obsession with making different foods from Japan.
Four more. <laughs> My party has six. You know, there's been so many different works where, you know, there's a concept of the living labyrinth, right? And including, like, so many derivative works about, like, uh, labyrinth masters or, or dungeon masters and whatnot. You can't use it. <laughs> Honestly, there's like all manners of special skills that he can use. It is awfully convenient. This is a much more uh, this is a much more efficient way of earning money. Yeah, I think actually at this point in time, Roxanne already displayed uh, how she can fight towards Michio.
Whoosh. All right, all right, yeah, at this point, all right. Can you guys imagine, like, punching a tree? <laughs> oh, she got it. Roxanne's idea of normal, right? K.O. I think that pretty much tells you guys that, uh, you know, this is not exactly normal of this world. Like being able to, to change around a person's jobs. Oh, it's sexy time. <laughs> so this is pretty much the start of this sort of cycle to this series, right? Which is, you know, in the morning, they wake up uh, as soon as, as dawn breaks, they go to Labyrinth to fight all day, and then once, uh, you know, once we get to night times, it's time for some nighttime activities, right? <laughs>
I think they actually. All right, I actually checked the uh, the uncensored version later on. So it seems that they do uh, they do censor the voices as well. And of course, this is why he doesn't want to go back, right? I mean, who can blame the guy? Or boss next episode, eh? Yep, so it seems that they are actually progressing things along at a reasonable pace here. Right, in any case, I will see you guys after this. Alright guys, so uh, as I said at the beginning, in this episode we do get into Labyrinth once again. Uh, sure, Michio already made his uh, first debut there and we saw a few episodes or at least one episode of him going into Labyrinth and starting to, to slay some monsters, gather some things, right? But now that we have someone who's local here as well, we're finally able to uh, fill in the gaps to a lot of our information that Michio himself doesn't know uh, either, right? And so we are gradually, gradually uh, getting to know a little bit more about this world systems and and, uh, you know the various things that goes into here and um, yeah just just overall just getting a better feel for this uh, particular world and the way it operates as well right uh, so we learn we also see a lot more of Michelle's special skills there like the list is super super long you know sometimes I do feel that uh, in, in a certain way, it, it does act as a kind of Deus Ex Machina because, um, well, I wouldn't really call it a Deus Ex Machina, but, but it's quite convenient, actually, that there's always, like, some sort of, of skill or whatnot that, that somehow benefits the, the main character. Like, for instance, you know, I, I don't think normal, uh, I don't think under normal circumstances you would consider there to be a skill to increase the rate you, you can, um, you know, you can gather experience for, for magic crystals and so on and so forth, but, there just happens to be the skill here, which will play a role later on as well, but uh, I'm not going to get into that at this point. Uh, but beyond that, of course, we also see him having uh, lots of different abilities. He can he can freely adjust his attributes as well, which is also quite the OP power. Um, and all of this is is added on to you know his sort of like status uh, status skill, which allows him to see like um, you know it allows him to see people in the dark, allows him to see the true nature of of objects, it allows him to quickly evaluate any any single person like what their jobs are, what their levels are, what their skills are, etc. etc. And that honestly, like information is the most important sort of currency right and so out of all of the skills that that uh, Michio has like you know Durando or, or you know all those different kinds of spells that we've that we've been shown so far uh, probably still status is the one that I would want the most if I were to be Isekai here um, and we also learn a little bit more about like the, the jobs as well so even from the very first episode right we we, we learned that uh, unlocking jobs is the simple matter of meeting the prerequisites uh, prerequis right so that includes maybe you know if we are going from a gamification logic as well there's so many different kinds of MMORPGs that utilize the same system as well typically it's that you need to have like like there might be some sort of like a prerequisite class uh, like in this case lots of people start out uh, having a villager class and so on and so forth um, and and so that's that could be like one of the uh, requirements here that you're you have to have like a certain job level of a certain type of job uh, and you know combined with that maybe you need to uh, actually do some actions right rather than being a situation where you you level up or you um, you increase your uh, you, you know, you unlock some sort of job by, by going to like a job trainer or whatnot. This world uses much more of a hands-on system, right? So the, the, by being, by defeating a monster using your bare hands, you're able to unlock the job profession of monk and, and priest and so on and so forth. And so it also, you know, it, it kind of like goes in, into various other things as well, right? You can, you can kind of, uh, get the uh, feeling or understanding that if you, if you swing a sword, then you'll become a swordsman. If you, uh, utilize magic, then you'll become a mage or something of that sort. Although the mage 
part is kind of peculiar. Like it, it definitely like I'm sure that some people are are already thinking how can you how can you release a spell if you're not a mage yet and yet uh, you know one of the prerequisites to becoming a mage is to unleash a spell right well <laughs> that will be explained later on so I'm not going to spoil that part yet um, and um, yeah mostly mostly this kind of stuff right and obviously like being a beast warrior probably has some uh, you know you have to have some ratio requirements as well and you know how to become a warrior in the first place etc etc right so uh, we have that system in place and judging from Roxanne's reactions we can also infer that being able to freely change one's job is also something that's not really done and it's not exactly something that's commonplace in this world as well so so do take note of that right because Roxanne now that we have Roxanne here it serves as a very good anchor as to what is the norm for this world and what isn't. So we can have a better understanding of just how far uh, Michio is different from this world and how many like cheat abilities that he actually has, right? So that's kind of important to to understanding the context here and to knowing like um, you know what are some potential things that that only Michio can do and um, yeah that kind of sort of thing here. Um, let me think. So, what else to talk about? Um, oh yeah. Uh, so let's talk about Roxanne herself, right? So, so in this episode, we kind of sort of get a hint of like her uh, her own cheat like capabilities as well, like the fact that she has this you know super sensitive nose that's able to basically detect uh, you know where monsters are. In fact, I don't. Th I think they haven't really quite mentioned it here yet, but she's actually also able to. Uh, to uh, detect even a higher level of like she not only knows where the monsters are she can actually infer some all some other information based on smell but because they haven't mentioned it yet I don't want to spoil anything so let's just leave it at that for now and and also like her actual abilities as a warrior right we can clear we can see here that she has amazing dodge capabilities uh, she has great footwork etc etc and um, yeah so so we, we we do know at this point that she is quite the capable fighter uh, that's able to stand on her own. Of course, we haven't really seen her defeating other monsters yet. I personally, I like I've, my memory is a little bit fuzzy whether or not that should have happened already or not. But um, you know, I, I think we can clearly see the potential is there yet, yeah, right? And and Roxanne herself clearly takes an interest to the labyrinth. Uh, you know, that's that's what she. Um, you know, that's that's the t we've been dropped hints so far that you know being in the labyrinth is something that that's uh, really important to to Roxanne. She wants to prove that her worth as a warrior, uh, and you know, and, and we can clearly see that anything that's related to uh, actual combat, battling within, or, or trying to challenge the labyrinth, she gets all excited about, right? So that's also an important part of understanding Roxanne's personality, and like I'm sure. Maybe in, especially in the next episode where we are going to have this sort of like a uh, floor level boss uh, that is going to be a good uh, sort of representation of both of their capabilities. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this episode. Uh, like I said at the very end there, so we are going to enter into this sort of, uh, of common cycle here, right? Uh, I think I mentioned this a little bit in the last episode as well, which is, you know, for all things considered, even though the subject matter of, of, of this, and it's clearly an etchy work and, and whatnot, but... You know, all in all things considered, I do feel that this is actually this series is actually quite vanilla, especially when it terms in terms of its sex scenes and and whatnot. Even later on, like like you know, it's in the title, right? He Michio is going to build a harem. He's already mentioned here in this episode. He's going to be recruiting more party members as well. And you know, we, we've pretty much already been been spoiled by the opening, like or or you know, two episodes ago with that with that sort of like weird time skip portion. You know, who the rest of the party members are, right? We already know all of that. Uh, yeah. Yet, even even so, like even with this harem of, of five uh, beauties and whatnot, I would still say that it, this is you know looking through, especially yeah, reading through the sex scenes or or uh, both in the in the novel, like web novel, light novel, or in the manga, it's honestly quite vanilla, all things considered. Like it's edgy, but it's vanilla if that makes if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, it, it, this is definitely not exactly a series where we see we see Michio like go off or or you know some of this other harem work which gets completely crazy and and so on and so forth. It, it Michio is like he has his schedule down pat, right? Like in the future, it's just gonna be like I mentioned, you know, we wake up, go to lab room, do what we need to do, and then at night time we have sexy time, and and it's just you know, he he's. He's just a man of repetition, right? He 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 knows what he likes, and he's going to continue to do it and just settle down into this uh, 
in his life here. And we also do see a little bit, a little inkling of, of uh, Michio's eventual obsession with food as well, where even in this episode, we kind of hear him saying, oh, he wants to do this, he wants to do that, he wants to recreate these dishes, etc., etc. I mean, one can't really blame him. It, it's not like there's not much else to do here, right? Uh, this is clearly like a sort of like a medieval fantasy setting. So it's not like he has television, it's not like he has computers or, or whatnot. He's not going to go out partying and, and so on and so forth. And like I said, if, if sexy times are only done at nighttime, then what is he supposed to do in between to lay off steam uh, beyond um, beyond going into a labyrinth, right? And so that's kind of, I feel, why later on we have this many side missions or, or side stories, I guess you could say, which really deals, you know, not with the exploration of the labyrinth as well, not in adding new party members or really having any sort of main plot development, but just simply trying to you know, trying to go on adventure and complete one of the dishes that was originally in Japan, right? Um, but I don't know how far they are going to go with this particular anime. At least so far, um, I'm actually quite, I'm actually kind of pleased at the pace that they are developing it. So so far, you know, I, I'm not 100% sure uh, whether or not they they really faithfully adapted the the events in the novel or the manga. I I think probably not. There's probably still going to be some gaps, but overall, like looking through this episode, I don't really find anything particularly out of place, right? Except maybe that, hey, how come he hasn't let, uh, he, how come he hasn't let Roxanne fight with his sword, or at least let us see Roxanne fight with his sword, and, um, and, and do what she needs to do, right? Um, that part definitely is a big question mark to me, like, why didn't, they didn't show that? But, again, it could be, like, I'm just misremembering stuff, or it could be that they're saving it to have some epic battle in the next episode between the floor boss and Roxanne and Michio. So, we'll just have to stay tuned and see what is going to go on in the next one. Until then, guys, thank you, and I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.